Could Sweden send Ukraine the Gripen fighter? Ukraine's quest for modern jets has so far landed at the iconic US-made F-16s and a possible promise of French mirages, with the goal of keeping Russian threats at bay. But I think the Swedish Gripen would have been a better choice for Ukraine. Hello friends, Wes O'Donnell here, veteran of the US Army Infantry and the US Air Force, and I feel the need, the need for speed. Ah, Sweden. I am obsessed with the Swedish tradition of fika. Every day at 10 a.m. and 3 p.m. you step away from screens, relax, and have some coffee and a pastry. Maybe a canil boule with some friends or loved ones. We need more of that in the States. What are we talking about here? Oh, the Gripen. When Western Europe set out to reinforce Ukraine's air defenses, the F-16 was an obvious choice. As more European nations phased out the Fighting Falcon in favor of the newer F-35, a nice stockpile of retired F-16s became available. Belgium, Denmark, Greece, the Netherlands, and Norway all had jets to spare, and Ukraine was happy to take them off their hands. But not everyone thought that the F-16 was Ukraine's best option. Rumblings from Saab, the Gripen's maker, argued that the Gripen CD might be an even better fit for Ukraine's unique challenges. And by September 2024, Sweden wasn't just toying with the idea. In its 17th military aid package to Ukraine, Stockholm outlined a Gripen support plan, just in case Ukraine's F-16s needed some Scandinavian reinforcements down the line. Tailor-made for close combat with Russian forces, the Gripen is a jet that many experts argue should be Ukraine's long-term fighter. Gripens are a way better fit for Ukraine than the F-16s, says Michael Bonart, an air warfare expert at the RAND Corporation designed to operate from all sorts of locations, including plain old civilian roads, the Gripen is rugged enough to thrive in Ukraine's battle-torn landscape. Right now, the Swedish government says sending Gripens isn't in the cards since the priority is getting F-16s operational in Ukraine, but they are acquiring Gripen parts worth about $200 million. Translation, some of Sweden's Gripen CD jets are getting a stay of execution as their parts get repurposed instead of being scrapped, making future donations a possibility. Now, the timing of this shift is interesting. Sweden originally planned to recycle its CD Gripens into the latest E models to keep its fleet at combat strength. But as tensions in Europe escalated, the Swedish Defense Ministry decided to manufacture new parts instead of dismantling its older Gripens. This means there's now a surplus of CD Gripens that could theoretically be rehomed to Ukraine. Besides Sweden's Gripens already in service, Saab reportedly has 18 to 22 unused whitetail Gripens that were never sold. It's unclear how many of these have engines, but they might be dusted off for Ukraine's wish list if things proceed. Now, the F-16 is no slouch when it comes to rugged landings. It can land on roads if necessary, but it does require a more pampered setup. The Gripen, meanwhile, was made for improvisation, more like a fighter jet that moonlights at the second city. Most notably, it was conceived from the very beginning to take off and land from short civilian roads. This trend of flexible operations is gaining popularity as threats increase worldwide. Even the U.S. and its European allies have started training pilots to take off and land from highways using jets like the F-35 and the A-10. Just north of where I live here in Michigan, we watched A-10s practice landing on a state highway. A small scrappy Air Force needs aircraft that don't demand a swarm of engineers on the ground. According to the UK's Royal United Services Institute, Gripens are highly practical, only needing a team of six for maintenance, four of whom don't even need high-level training. 
It's practically Ikea-level simplicity, at least for fighter jets. By comparison, the F-16, while capable, is a bit higher maintenance, requiring more trained crew and specialized gear. In the US Air Force, the basic tactical maintenance course is at least 88 days at Shepard Air Force Base in Texas, a filthy base that should be considered a combat deployment. Sorry, Shepard. For a nation in Ukraine's shoes, the Gripen is arguably a better fit for sustained dispersed operations. The Gripen was designed to kill Russian Sukhois with impressive electronic warfare systems, a small radar signature, and maneuverability fit for close combat. If the F-16 is a black belt in karate, then the Gripen is a master of Krav Maga. And while the Gripen hasn't actually seen combat yet, its design speaks volumes about its potential. Gripen is an agile single-engine jet that can reach speeds of Mach 2.0 with an 800 kilometer combat range and a payload of up to 5,300 kilograms. The Gripen's lightweight maneuverable design lets it land and take off from rougher, shorter runways, right around 700 meters. Perfect for the kind of improvised airfields Ukraine might have to use. In contrast, the F-16 is a bit fussier about runway conditions, typically requiring a minimum of 2,400 meters for smooth operations. The Gripen also packs an impressive weaponry loadout. The long-range Meteor missile, the trusty AIM-120B AMRAAM, and the AIM-9L Sidewinders, and even anti-ship missiles. Most of these are in the Swedish inventory, so any Gripens headed to Ukraine could come with the right firepower. And the Meteor in particular is a hot commodity, boasting speeds above Mach 4 and a range over 200 kilometers. Sweden has streamlined the Gripen's flight systems too, making it easier for pilots to learn and operate in combat. Unlike early F-16 models, which require constant throttle adjustments, the Gripen comes with auto throttle and carefree flight control systems. This reduces pilot workload and task saturation, freeing up their attention for target tracking and fighter maneuvers. For Ukraine, which needs jets ready to go yesterday, this ease of training and use makes the Gripen highly attractive. NATO has long praised the Gripen's suitability for agile combat employment, where planes operate from dispersed expeditionary locations. Some experts think Sweden could offer Gripen training for Ukrainian pilots now, setting up the possibility for a future transfer once the F-16s and Mirages are fully integrated. For now, the F-16s remain a crucial starting point for Ukraine's Air Force revival, with allies able to supply jets and spare parts more readily. However, the Gripen's ruggedness and minimal ground support make it a strong candidate if Ukraine ever needs an air fleet that operates on the fly, literally. And Sweden might have competition for Ukraine's future fighter fleet. France has stepped up offering the Dassault Mirage 2000 jets. French Armed Forces Minister Sébastien Le Carreau confirmed that the Mirages would arrive in Ukraine by early 2025 with added air-to-ground and anti-electronic warfare capabilities. This commitment supports French President Emmanuel Macron's statement in June that Ukraine would receive the Mirage 2000, gradually being replaced in the French Air Force by the Dassault Raphael. In the end, Ukraine's Western allies are providing a layered air defense approach to counter Russian aggression. Each aircraft, the F-16, the Mirage, and perhaps one day the Gripen, offers distinct capabilities and together they're building a multinational fleet to deny Russia the skies and strengthen Ukraine's defense in ways unimaginable just a few years ago. The battle-tested F-16 may be today's solution, but the Gripen's unique qualities make it a fighter worth watching for Ukraine's future. If Russia remains the neighbor from hell, a fleet of these Swedish workhorses could prove to be exactly what Ukraine needs in the years ahead. That's it for today. Glory to Ukraine. Glory to the heroes. Slava Ukraini.